prophets that played two roles. The hal mentioned here is mubashirina wa mundirin, giving good news and giving warnings. And you know, we pass over these words very quickly, but they have some very deep embedded wisdoms in them. And I just want to highlight a couple of things about the words givers of good news and givers of warning. You have how many members across the world, the world where the khutbah is being given every single week. And it's sort of uh, this tussle, are we supposed to be giving a message of hope? Are we supposed to be giving good news to the people, cheering them up? Or are we supposed to be giving them warnings about how things are, you know, how they better get their act together? And you know, what tends to happen in many, many, many communities, not just ours, but in the Christian community, in the Jewish community, and we're no exception ourselves, there tends to be one line of kind of rhetoric, one kind of discourse in Islam, that's all just painting a flowery picture, it's a feel, religion is a feel good thing, you're supposed to hear the sermon and kind of feel better about yourself and the positive outlook and all of that. And that's just, that's pretty much it. And what that does, it, that sounds great, but it's the caveat and the problem with that is that you, send, you tend to develop a delusional sense of positivity, which isn't ba balanced with warning. Because our, our, the prophets didn't just come to cheer people up and give them good news about Jannah, they also came to warn them about hellfire. And on the converse, there's another extreme that's very true. That people that, you know, because our religions, especially Islam, this is more so in Islam than in the Christian and Jewish tradition. It's more so in Islam that Allah gave us more explicit, more graphic description of hell and a more explicit detail about what is going to go on on Judgment Day. Like if you read Christian and Jewish scripture, whatever's left of it, you're not going to find that kind of detail. The, what we have, like precise descriptions of particular kinds of punishments in hellfire. And of course that's true of Jannah too. We have a better and more precise description of Jannah than any other faith tradition. We do. And that's something they make fun of even. Right? And actually they're not the first. The Kufar made fun of it too. Well, so what kinds of trees do you get? And they made fun of the trees of hellfire. Was well, this is a home business. Well, you know, you know, and how is a tree growing in the middle of fire? Well, how does that make any sense? And that sort of thing. They used to make fun of it. But the point I'm trying to make is that because we have such a graphic description of hellfire, you can actually in 20 minutes in a khutbah paint a pretty, pretty bleak picture and send people off into deep depression in 20 minutes. You could do that actually, <laughs> you know? And you can't argue, brother, why are you, you know, why are you making people upset and why are you making people sad? Well, it's in the Quran, obviously we represent, we can't be, you know, picking and choosing what we, what we teach from our religion. But we're learning something very heavy about the methodology of this message. Of course, Islam is at the end of the day, it is good news and it is a warning. It's both of those things. But it's prioritized first of all. The first things prophets brought were good news. Hubashirin. Then, Wamundirin. And then when those good news were not being, you know, were not enough to see a change in behavior, then warnings were there too. And this is actually the natural course of things. Allah Azza wa Jal, you know, engages in positive reinforcement well before He engages in negative reinforcement. The first surah of the Qur'an is actually the philosophy of all of Islam and it begins with positive things. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim. And then switches to what might be a little more scary, significantly scarier concept, Maliki Yawmiddin. It switches to that later. But it doesn't start with that, oh, Day of Judgment, you better believe. No, 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 it begins I mean, he's a Rahman, he's a Rahim. It begins on, on, even begins with Hamd, you know. And he didn't even begin at Taqwa Lillahi, you know, at Taqwa Lillahi Rabbil Alameen. The, the fear and the caution is for Allah. No, Hamd is for Allah. It's a positive thing. So there is, on the one hand, there's a priority given to the good news, but at the same time, it's not one or the other. It's one and 